What's different about this one? Um, well, the Perfect Burger, we really wanted to launch a product that has the texture of meat, has the uh, experience of meat, um, but we really wanted to elevate the product. So we have all ingredients that are recognizable. You flip over the back of the box, you look at the ingredients, it's everything you would know. Um, we also wanted to improve upon the nutritionals. So our products, less sodium, less fat, a lot less saturated fat. We're infusing the product also with four different types of vegetables, um, squash, carrots, beets, and um, sweet potato. And we also have third-party certifications, non-GMO verification, uh, vegan, gluten-free, and kosher. Do you think the ingredient list is a liability for those other players, given um, the fact that some of those ingredients are hard to pronounce, for example? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends a little bit um, of what the, the goal is. I mean, those guys have been very focused on improving the environment um, and trying to go after the meat industry. So. Um, they can help to protect the environment. But uh, for Dr. Prager's, we're, you know, we're really a food company, and we really want to use ingredients that are recognizable and people can flip over and understand. How hard is it to get the mouthfeel just right? Why is this seemingly yeah. so difficult? Yeah, it, it, it takes time. Uh, we spent about a year and a half developing the product. Wow. Yeah, um, and it, it is, you know, the texture of meat is different, and when you're working with plants, we use pea protein in ours um, and keep the ingredients simple, but it, it does take quite a bit of work to really try to get the mouth feel and the experience exactly like meat. Could you handle um, an order from a large quick service restaurant chain like everybody is dying to see yeah. done? Yeah, we can. Um, we spent a lot of time over the past year and a half working on supply chain. Uh, we look at supply chain really being two parts, one from a raw material standpoint and vendor relationships. So we've really secured up our uh, raw materials for the next few years. And then on the other side, being able to produce the product. So. Uh, Dr. Prager's recently built out a new production area within our facility. We run two production lines currently. We've built out a new one, and it's a high-speed line. So we're actually going to be able to double our capacity within, within the next four to five weeks. So, um, One of the other comp impossible or beyond meat, I think it may be impossible, uses a pea isolate. Is that any way similar to what you do, or are they completely different? Uh, sort of chemical combinations that they're using on these for these burgers. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what they are. It's, it's beyond that's using a pea uh, protein, um, and we are also using a, a pea protein. Um, again, the, one of the big differences as well is that we're infusing it with vegetables, so we, that really ties back to the DNA of Dr. Prager's products, where we've been, for the past 25 years, really trying to get people to eat more vegetables and incorporate it into their diet. I got to think that you guys have been doing this for a quarter century. Along come these yeah. new players and people go bananas. I mean, aren't you saying, hey, we've been right here? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the category has always been growing for a really long time. Obviously, the past few years, the category has been on fire. Uh, Dr. Prager's is up 30 to 35 percent year over year over the past five years. We're approaching $100 million. And one of the things we're most proud about is that we do it profitably. It, it, watching the IPO of at least one of them, has that given you th more thoughts about doing it yourself? Um, no, we really haven't considered a, an exit or an IPO. Um, you know, now there's been so much attention brought to the category. Really, we're having a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a while, but there's such a uh, new energy in the category that it just allows us to create more items and come out with more exciting stuff as that category expands. Are your, is your consumer, though, buying it more for health reasons as opposed to save the planet reasons? Uh, I think, yeah, I think our consumer is really the type of person who's flipping over the box, reading the ingredients, reading the nutritionals, and, uh, you know, wants something that they can feel good about feeding themselves and feeding their family. So I, th I think for health, yeah. Finally, you know the market. Uh, you've been studying it for decades. When people say it could be as big as what plant-based beverages have done. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, if you look at the, um, the meat category uh, on a global level, it's a trillion dollar business. Um, I think currently now just meat alternatives are roughly at about uh, a billion dollars. Uh, so, and, that, and that's globally. So I think there's a lot of room for that growth.